everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my weekly wrap up of May 24th, 2015. I hope you guys have had a good week and are having a good weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend here in the United States, so we get a three day weekend, an extra day off, for which I am very grateful. I will be spending all of my Monday sleeping in, reading, eating, and binge watching Mythbusters because I have a very predictable, boring life. Anyway, on to things that I read this past week. I finished two novels, one collection of short stories, and two comics. Let's have a celebratory moment because the first thing that I finished this past week was Cryo Burn by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is the 15th Rokosigan novel and the last one currently out, so I have now read all of the novels, all the short stories, all of the novellas. I am completely caught up on a Rokosigan saga and I am ready for the 16th book coming out in 2016. I feel like I've accomplished something. I'm just really, really happy that I finished this series, or caught up on it. It's not finished necessarily, but anyway. <laughs> uh, in this one, we're back with Miles. Uh, Miles has been sent to a planet called Kibodaini. Um Emperor Gregor of the Barian Empire has gotten wind that the cryo-freezing corporations on Kibodaini are up to something. One of these corporations is trying to expand its operations to Komar, which is a planet in the Bahrain Empire where Emperor Gregor's wife is from, and they think that there is something fishy with this contract. They're not sure what this cryocorp is up to. So Gregor sends Miles to go imperially audit the situation. It's, it's an investigation, um, like a lot of the post-Admiral Naismith stories and, and Miles' storyline. I don't know what to say about this book specifically. I am really confused. It's a good book. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an average book when I compare it to some of the really great Vorkosigan books or some of the really great things that Bujold has written. The story didn't really interest me which is kind of odd. I'm usually pretty invested in a lot of Miles' stories. His capers are really entertaining. This particular one, though, I feel like the cryo-freezing technology just didn't capture my interest. I feel sort of like Bujold is trying to do with cryo-freezing what she did with the uterine replicators, which became a really big thing in the Rokoskin universe and have driven a lot of plots and has just been... You know, when you introduce a technology that means that women don't have to become physically pregnant anymore, they can avoid things like pregnancy and dying and childbirth, it really changes culture and society. And, and Bujold has explored a lot, a lot of that in previous books. And I think in this case, she's basically trying to explore the uh, consequences of cryo-freezing. If everybody is trying to cheat death on a planet by freezing themselves, and but still remaining in control of like the economy and corporations, even though you're frozen and kind of dead, this it, it creates a lot of social turmoil eventually when the younger generations who are still alive and unfrozen don't have anything. Um, so I think that's what she was trying to go for in this. There, there's this huge theme of trying to avoid death, trying to cheat death, but whether this is actually the right thing to do, whether that's helpful in the long run. It really ties into Miles's life and his family. I can't really tell you about that, but basically I didn't think that the, the, the thematic content in the story meant anything until the last couple of pages in the epilogue. The adventure itself was so-so. Like I said, I wasn't really invested in the idea of cryo-freezing. It was a little bit boring to me. There's a perspective, a POV of an 11-year-old boy in this, which I didn't care about at all. I didn't think it really added that much to the story. So I was pretty meh about a lot of this stuff. I enjoyed seeing Miles when he was on screen. I enjoyed the moment when he figures out what's going on. But other than that, not... The only thing that really struck me hard, like in the gut, was the epilogue. Because this this huge thing happens in the epilogue and it makes you completely rethink what people have been talking about in the rest of the book. And so I'm really up in the air. Do I do I like this book because the ending is just a shocker or and kind of sad, or do I sort of dislike it because it didn't it didn't have that oomph that I want from a Rokosing book. I don't know. I think that I would probably really want to come back and reanalyze this book after I've read the next one because I'm pretty sure that the 16th book coming out in 2016 has got to address 
basically the epilogue, the thing that happens in the epilogue. Um, it's almost like these books should be like a duology. They're the first part of a story and then the second part of the story. Next I finished two comics. I finished Volume 1 of Chew by John Lehman and Rob Guillory and Volume 1 of Sweet Tooth by Jeff Lemire. I'm not going to talk about these at all because I have already filmed, edited, and uploaded a double review of these where I talk about it in much more detail of what I thought about them, so look forward to that. The next book that I read was Emma by Jane Austen. I actually buddy read this with my friend Rachel, which is very interesting because I've read more Jane Austen than my friend has, and I also went into it already knowing the story of Emma. I saw the BBC adaptation with Romola Garay about a year and a half ago. So my friend hasn't really read as much Jane Austen and didn't know the story, but I went into it already knowing basically how Emma is going to be redeemed at the end of it and knowing a lot more about the unlikable irritating characters and their role in the story. So we had some interesting conversations about that as we were reading. The story is about a young woman named Emma Woodhouse. She's young, beautiful, rich, and rather spoiled. Because she's financially stable, she has the luxury of not having to marry. She doesn't want to, and she vows she's not going to ever marry. But she delights in matchmaking. She thinks she's good at it, and she's interfering in other people's romantic lives, and the story is about how that backfires on her. And then she has to learn a lesson about that. It's really about the education of Emma, and learning a lesson, I think, in humility, and not interfering in other people's lives, um, and not making decisions for other people that are not in any way her business or her right to be making that sort of decision for them. I, I don't think that Emma is my favorite character by any means. While I think that she has many good qualities and that she goes through this complete reversal by the end of the book, she's much, much more likable. My favorite character is actually Mr. Knightley. I, I have a huge soft spot for gentlemen. You know, he is such a, a good, kind person who I think is the best example for Emma by the end of how to be kind to people, even the people who irritate and annoy you. I can absolutely see why a lot of people might not like reading this book because for like the first two thirds, maybe the first three quarters, Emma really is an unlikable character, but I think it is totally worth reading to get near the end and see how much her thought processes and her emotions change and, like I said, that complete reversal of the character, so worth the read. The last thing that I read this week was Kaleidoscope. This is a collection of diverse YA science fiction and fantasy stories. It's edited by Elisa Krasnestein and Julia Rios and has a lot of pretty big names in it like Garth Nix, Sophia Samatar, Ken Liu, John Chu, Jim C. Hines. Um, I picked up this collection because I recognized a lot of the author's names, and it is diverse. It has a lot of diverse characters. Um, it's, that's, that's the theme of the collection. You have most of the main characters are, um, you have LGBTQ characters, disabled characters, a lot of non-white characters. Thank you. That's so nice to read about. Um, and a lot of female characters as well. I liked probably about half of the stories in here. I didn't think there were any really bad stories, but not all of them were really my kind of thing, but there were definitely some standouts. A couple of the stories that I really enjoyed the most were Cookie Cutter Superhero by Tansy Rayner Roberts, The Legend Trap by Sean Williams, Chupacabra Song by Jim C. Hines. It has singing magic in it, and I am a sucker for magic that is sung. Um, Signature by Faith Mudge. Careful Magic by Karen Healy, which is probably my favorite out of the end, out of all of these. I love that story. And last week I actually talked about The Truth About Owls by Amal El Motar, which turned out to be one of my favorite stories in the collection. That's everything that I read this past week. I'm currently listening to an audiobook, Stiff by Mary Roach, which is about cadavers. I thought I'd be kind of grossed out. I put off listening to this one for a while, but Honestly, it's been very interesting. I think I'm learning a lot more stuff that I didn't know than when I listened to, like, Bonk by her. Um, I also recommend Packing for Mars, which is very interesting if you want to know more about the space program and space travel. I'm also reading two physical books. I am halfway through 70s by Neil Stevenson, which is so awesome. It's gonna, I, guys, it's gonna be a five-star book. It's gonna be so fantastic. And I'm also uh, working my way through Prudence by Gail Carriger. I haven't finished yet because it's kind of been on the back burner when I started reading 70s. I just didn't have time to read everything all at the same time, but I am enjoying it. It's different from the Parasol Protectorate series. It's very different from the Finishing School series. It's um, not as fast-paced, 
but it's really interesting to see the characters and this this world that Carragher created like 20 years on and see the children of people like Ivy Tunstall and Alexia Terabody going on their own adventures. That is it for me in this weekly wrap-up. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you've read any of these books, you want to talk about them, please comment down below. Let me know how your weekend has been going, if you have any plans for this coming week, and I will talk to you guys again soon in my next video. Bye.